It's time to get your geek on with Dave Gramellion. Oh, yes. I am Dave Gramellion. Welcome to Get Your Geek On, powered by Southtown Games on Pleasanton Road near Loop 410 on the south side of San Antonio, where your gaming family wants to welcome you. Here we will talk Star Wars, Star Trek, DC, Marvel, video gaming, really all things geek that have dominated this little world of ours. You see, geek is not what it was 20 or 30 years ago. Geek is in. Geek is very in. Geek is now the mainstream, and we are here to talk the latest and greatest that is geek right here on 9.30 a.m. The Answer Talk Radio and 9.30 a.m. The Answer dot com. This is Season 2, Episode 19, and tonight we have a guest from Southtown Games here in studio with us. That'll be Nate Skinner. We'll be talking gaming and Southtown Games with him in just a little bit here. Marvel News, Marvel News, Marvel News. We talked some Marvel last week, but, you know, they just keep on making news. Is there going to be an all-female Marvel movie coming our way? We'll be discussing that, the Black Panther trailer, and how Mark Ruffalo is absolutely cursed. That is the most cursed actor in all of Hollywood at this point. Good gracious, that poor guy. We'll talk about what happened uh, with him uh, coming up here. After the bottom of the hour news break, I need to go on a rant. It's been a while since I went on a really good, strong rant. I got to get this thing about CBS and Star Trek off my chest. They're, I, they're screwing up one of the greatest franchises of all time, and it's driving me crazy. And no, I'm not talking about Discovery. So the Han Solo standalone movie finally got a movie title, and it's called Solo. Brilliant. Genius. So imaginative. So inspired. So lame. So idiotic. What, are you kidding me here? So we sat down and we came up with the top 11 movie titles it could have been. That's right, the Brain Trust here at Get Your Geek On got their heads together and put together that list, the top 11 titles we could have given to that movie, and we will talk about that coming up as well. But first, got to make sure that I have everything I need in order to run the premier talk radio show for geeks across the United States, rapidly becoming across the world. And first, got to have something to drink here. Mm-hmm. You're going to talk for almost an hour. By God, you better have something to drink. For me personally, I, like to, I do like to have a back scratcher on hand because if you're going to be in the middle of an interview and you got that one spot in the middle of your back you know everybody has that you just can't reach, rather than squirm my way through the interview, I like to have a back scratcher right there. Plus, if you're going to have any type of a geek show, whether it's radio, podcast, YouTube, Twitch, whatever, I don't care what it is, but by God, you better have yourself a lightsaber. I have Old Blue right here with me, keeping the Minox at bay. All right, very cool. And we also added into our little lineup here my Sonic Screwdriver. Perfect. So we are set, rip fired, and ready to go. I want to make sure also that I am wearing something geeky as well. While I do have on my non-geeky San Antonio Spurs t-shirt, because we won. <laughs> won the opener. That was very nice. I am wearing my CounterLogic Gaming hat. That is CounterLogic Gaming Red, supporting the women, so we are good to go there. Let me introduce my Motley crew here. To my left, your right as you look across the radio dial. Well, we, it's just Nate. We'll, we'll, we'll get to Nate. Don't worry. We're, we're coming to you. If you look further to my left, your right across the radio dial, you will see the man, the myth, the legend, the Grand Poobah, Grand Admiral, Grand everything for the Star Wars Society of San Antonio. He is Peter Gonzalez. Hello, how you doing, everybody? Hey, Peter, what are you rocking there? I since it's well, cooler weather, and you know it's it's also, also pumpkin spice weather season. <laughs> I'm wearing my orangey uh, rubble T-shirt. Excellent. Now, yes. of course, cooler weather down here means it dips below ninety. Uh, That's some, fall weather. Sometimes 89. That, there you go. All right. If you look further to my left, your right across the radio dial, you will see the man spinning the ones and zeros, our sound prognosticator. He is Goose. All right, Goose, what are you rocking hey. there? Well, I 
have a great shirt. It's called The Last Prime. It's a little Transformers Star Wars mashup that I got from RIPTAPPAREL.COM. That's R-I-P-T APPAREL.COM. And when you use the promo code G-Y-G-O at checkout, you get 10% off your order. That includes clearance, regular merchandise, their daily stuff, which is cool. That's R-I-P-T APPAREL.COM, promo code G-Y-G-O to get 10% off. All right. Well, that gets all the pleasantries out of the way. All the small talk and chit-chat is now in the past, so we can go ahead and welcome Welcome here into the comfy confines of the 9.30 a.m. The Answer Studio. We welcome in our Southtown Games guest, Nate Skinner. Alrighty, welcome here, Nate. Thanks, guys. Glad to be here. Sorry, I'm not wearing a cool, you know, gaming shirt or something like the rest of you guys. That's okay. You came. You brought cool gaming games. I did. Absolutely. I that, that. So we'll 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 let it go this time. But we'll remind you next time. Next time. I'll, I'll be prepared. <laughs> now, I love this. We do run a live Facebook chat when we record the show on Thursday at facebook.com slash G-Y-G-O radio. And I love this. In response to Minion wearing his, pumpkin, we're going to call it Pumpkin Spice Star Wars shirt, uh, Joshua lastly did the hashtag Pumpkin Spice Life. <laughs> it's true. Then You know there's actually Pumpkin Spice dish soap at H-E-B now? I, I'm not kidding. Pumpkin spice dish soap. Just stop. That's insane. I know. I need oh to grab my that. Goodness. Bye, everybody. I so know what I'm getting. Nate, what is going on? What is shaking down at Southtown Games? Oh man, tons of stuff. We have. I don't know if you've been on our Facebook page in a while, but we have. And y'all are busy over we there. We have. We have more events, I think, than any other game store in San Antonio. Like every single day, we have some type of event planned. Yeah, we actually posted a screenshot. It was everything I could fit, mm-hmm. and there was there was more. I mean, I could only fit so much on on my on my screenshot. But y'all have like so many tournaments going we have on, crazy I mean, amount of tournaments, and for for tons of different game systems too. Like all the card player guys are taken care of, all the tabletop guys are taken care of. So like we could have a Yu Gi Oh tournament on the same day that we do a. 40k tournament and, and stuff like that so it's, it's very uh, diverse a lot of stuff going on all the time i'm hearing rumors rumors, yeah, rumors. okay that y'all are going to be expanding uh that yeah that has been talked about okay that's, all right that's, that's, all good. that's all i'm going to say on the subject but that has been talked about <laughs> <laughs> okay well we're not we're not trying to get you know insider secrets or, or trades or anything like that but that will be exciting because uh i, I agree y'all need to get bigger no. I mean, it, it, because uh, y'all are big enough already, we, right, but when you cram people in there for a tournament like y'all do all the time, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, expansion would be great. We, we are a decent-sized store, but, I mean, it's just the, I mean, we get more people every day, every week, you know, more and more people are coming in, and we are getting to that point where, like, man, for a decent-sized store, we really need more space, you know what I mean? Now, one of the things that I really love about y'all's store is the staff. We constantly harp on how knowledgeable and friendly everyone is. Was that something that, that when you hired on uh, managers and workers that you emphasize, or are they just that way by nature? Oh, no. Uh, the owner definitely wanted somebody, the people that are at the shop, he wanted them to know their area of expertise very, very well. Uh, so we have, like, Frank, he is very knowledgeable in all card games, right? He loves card games, plays them all the time, and he can sit down and talk to anybody about any card game and give them all the information. Myself, I'm the same way with the tabletop stuff. So we cover each other's, you know, strengths and weaknesses very, very well. And um, it's it's been a blast to teach people and get people excited about tabletop stuff. And I'm sure the same is true for Frank. He loves it. Yeah, because a, a lot of stores that I've seen, they're interested in selling stuff. Y'all are actually interested in helping people learn games. Exactly. All right. We want it's not so much the sale that we want. We want people to come in and play. Yeah. You know what I mean? And. I love it because I I say this all the time. When I get people excited about a game, it's not because I'm trying to sell it to you. It's because I want you to play with me. I want someone to play with. So what is your game? My game, uh, it's got to be either Warhammer 40K or Star Wars X-Wing. I love Star Wars X-Wing in 40K. Now, we probably have a lot of 40K. I know we have a, a large 40K audience out there, so... If anybody asks, he loves 40K, too. So I do. <laughs> very, very much. What, what, do you, what do you love most about 40K? Because it looks... I mean, just, uh, and again, I'm the outside looking in, mm-hmm. but it looks incredibly complicated. Oh, uh, it's, it, I, th- 
I think the biggest draw to it, man, is is honestly, it is it's an entire hobby. It's not just a game. You know, great games are, are fine to sit down and play or whatever. But for me, it's it's so immersive. You know, you build the models, you paint them, you come up with cool backgrounds, cool stories for your for your hero characters. You fight out. Uh, battles that were described in novels and video games and stuff like that is a completely immersive hobby, and that would I think would set that apart from a lot of other game systems. Plus, Space Marines. Space, yeah, Space. <laughs> who doesn't like a Space Marine? I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, Steve Sardesian in our uh, in our chat here on GYGO Radio over at Facebook says, "What about Ogre?" Ogre. I've actually uh, I haven't had the privilege of playing Ogre. Not yet. But Not we're... yet. But uh, I know there's actually a few people in San Antonio that have talked about it and love the game system. We just haven't had the people at our store have hasn't caught on yet. Now, do you play Armada as well as X Wing? Uh, I, I know about Armada. I don't play Armada personally because I wanted to go the route of X Wing, the uh, dog fighting. Uh, mm. Jet fighter mechanic is is what appeals to me more than the big capital ships stuff. But uh, there's a a very large community of people in San Antonio that play Armada, and it's very popular, and they go all throughout the different uh, game stores and do tournaments and stuff like that. In fact, one of our very first guests uh, last year when we started the show was Ben Apple. Oh, okay. And, and yeah. Ben Apple's huge in a tabletop. Yeah. I mean, massive. I, I think mean, he's one of the uh, guys who runs the Alamo City Fleet Command. You are correct, right? sir. Yeah. You are correct, sir. Not that, but I think he placed uh, either second or third at Worlds. Oh, wow. Last year. Well, congratulations, Ben. That's so awesome. we're, we're looking forward to him bringing home the gold this year. That'd be awesome. Uh, so, all right. So what's, what's the appeal to, to X-Wing? Other than you get to go pew pew with actual X wings. Oh, dude! I, every <laughs> single time I actually I do make the sound. You effect. make the sound. Pew pew pew. Zoom! You know when I'm <laughs> flying around. So, I'm, I'm such a kid in so many ways, man. Uh, X wing. It, it, in so many games, you know how you can kind of tell these guys are going to move here and you're going to do this or whatever. With X-Wing, man, in my opinion, movement is so crucial, and it's outthinking your opponent, trying to figure out where is he going to be so I can kind of plot my way to intercept him or get behind him and stuff like that. It makes me really think about, like, the fighters and the and the battles that actually took place in, this, in, the, in the movies. You know, they're coming around, trying to get behind each other, you know, taking TIE fighters out left and right. And uh, for me, that is, it's, it's a mind game, you know? I do like to think of it a lot like chess. You do mm-hmm. need to think three or four moves ahead. Exactly. It's like, okay, I've got my X-Wings here, but I really want my Corvettes to be here in three turns because I want his ships to be here in three turns. Mm-hmm. And it's it just because you plot in secret, you know, with your, your maneuver dial and you set them down, it, it, that's where the mind game comes in. And I often like to get into my opponent's head. I sit across from him like, hey, man, what am I doing? Where am I going to go? <laughs> what are you thinking? <laughs> I just, <laughs> it's fun for me. I don't know. All yeah. right. So with Southtown Games, we've talked about just how fast y'all are growing mm-hmm. and, and everything out there. What's the, what are the newest games that have come in? Uh, the newest game is definitely going to be the Shadespire that we're giving away and the Legend of the Five Rings. Uh, if I remember correctly, Legend of the Five Rings was actually a game that was out a long time ago, but has since been kind of redone and, and repackaged and, and, and brought uh, new life back into it. Um, but those are, are brand new. The Shadespire thing is going to be fantastic. People seem to really like that. And um, also there's a uh, new to our store is a, a whole big community for uh, Card Fight Vanguard. That's an, it's another card game. And about 20 people has come in looking for a place to 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 play their games and come in and we said yeah sure man we'll, we'll start carrying your product if you guys want to come in and start playing and they they did and they love it now one of the biggest complaints i hear about gaming tabletop gaming is it takes too long to learn mm-hmm. it just it's it's too complicated you spend three hours trying to figure it out and 30 minutes packing it away because you're done with it mm-hmm. what do you say to those uh that run into super complicated games uh, well, in all honesty, man, I when I'm trying to talk to people that are you know think it looks cool and want to get in, like card gamers for ex- for example that want to jump into the tabletop stuff, I kind of say, well, it's really no different than you memorizing your thousands of cards, you know, and their effects and their abilities and stuff like that, and and all. It's actually a little easier because it's you know one book you read it, and 40k has eight pages of rules. I mean, come on, <laughs> eight pages. <laughs> That's it. That's it. It is so simple, so easy to learn. And, uh, you know, just through a, through a demo with a brand new, fresh person doing one demo, they, they got it, you know, immediately. It's simple. All so. right. So, so here's our, our last question. We, need, we have to end on this. I can't let you go out of this room until you answer this. Oh, okay. Do you fight for the Empire? <laughs> I do. 
You do. I'm an empire guy. Yep. <laughs> yep. Let's see. What's the appeal of the empire? I, I don't know. Uh, get that all the time. But every time I go to like an X-Wing tournament or X-Wing game, is I'm always throwing down empire. It's empire all the time. So then you're looking forward to Battlefront then because it's told from the empire's point of view. Oh, yeah. I, I, I've never played Battlefront. I'm not a big uh, video game guy, but I probably will. I'll have to send you the trailer. The single player trailer came out today, and it's all empire. Is it? It's all empire point of view. So, you know, there's a uh, there's a game coming out next year called uh, Star Wars Legion. It's an actual tabletop game for Star Wars miniatures. Oh, that's awesome! And I'm I'm so so ready for it to drop. All right. Do we have any <laughs> uh, any specials going on? Any uh, any sales that we should let everybody know about over at Southtown? Absolutely. This actually covers for everybody. All the uh, Legion picture sleeves for all your card game stuff is all half off. Oh, nice. This is really cool. And all Star Wars X-Wing product is also half off. So All X-Wing products? All X-Wing products are half off. Uh, I hope y'all are listening to this. <laughs> I, I want to I make sure we didn't misquote your taking out of context. Nope. All Star Wars X-Wing products half off. 50% off X-Wing. Yep. That's incredible. Yep, that's all right, good. so that's Nate Skinner from Southtown Games. You can find them on Pleasanton Road on the south side of San Antonio near Loop 410 on the south side there. Thanks for coming in, man. We appreciate hey, taking the time out there. Thanks for uh, having me. Very cool. That's outstanding. All right. Well, then let's uh, let's keep you here for a minute, and let's go ahead and pivot over and talk some Marvel news here, shall we? This is that sequel to the smash hit, no equal. This one's for the true fans with whole cans and action figures. Flying, dining. This uh, segment is brought to you by our friends over at Pro Defense Pest Control. Pro Defense Pest Control was my pest control company even before I had the show, so you know I'm a big believer in what they do. They do fertilizer treatments. They do misting for uh, mosquitoes. Don't be fooled into thinking mosquito season is over. It's not. They also do free inspections and estimates for termites. Check out our friends over at Pro Defense Pest Control. All right, so the Black Panther trailer was released. The movie itself comes out on February 9th. Wow. Man, I'm... That was I'm, a good trailer. I'm hyped. Wakanda looks gorgeous. It, it just looks really good. I, I was, wasn't was expecting it. No expectations, and wow. It, it was incredible. It was, it was really fantastic. I was truly impressed by, like I said, Wakanda, but also the characters involved... The, the poster looked good. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything about this movie screams Marvel. It just yes. looks good. Nate, did you catch the, the trailer? I got to, yeah. you got to catch that trailer. All right, that's two things i got to send you I now on, on YouTube. I know. I'm, fall I'm falling behind, guys. I'm sorry. But now we have a little bit of political correctness that have come in. Uh, Marvel oh. has Marvel's taken some heat over the last few years because they don't have a female-led action movie. They haven't had it yet. There's no Black Widow movie out there. There's uh, no Scarlet Witch movie out there. There's nothing like that. Although DC is only one up, they have Wonder Woman, so at and, least and at least that's something. Batgirl. And soon to be, they do have a, a Batgirl movie coming. Captain Marvel is coming eventually, over a decade after Iron Man started the the whole shabab shebang. Uh, now Tessa Thompson, who is in Thor Ragnarok, said that she recently, and I'm quoting her directly here. This is coming from IO9. Quote. Recently, I marched up with a couple of other women that work in Marvel, and we went to Kevin. They're talking about Kevin, the president of Marvel, and said, What about a movie with some female superheroes? She said, Like all of them. Now, there were the Lady Liberators in the comics. They were an all-female superhero team that was put together by the Enchantress that included uh, Wasp and Black Widow and Scarlet Witch. Kevin said, and I said yes. That's a direct quote from Kevin. He said yes. Now, before you get all hyped and excited about the idea of an all-female Marvel superhero movie, which I would adore, that would be fantastic, keep in mind, Kevin also said we'd have a Black Widow movie. He said he was all for it. Oh, man, that'd be, that'd be fantastic. I'd love a Black Widow movie. And we are, uh, I'm looking at my, my clock here, and we, we're not getting it. it it's, it's not here. So don't get me wrong. Okay, an all-female Marvel movie would not be like another certain all-female movie. Okay, so uh, obviously Ghostbusters 2016 
was a, a remake with an all female cast. And I'm not slamming that movie because it was all women. I'm just saying it wasn't funny. It it just wasn't, and a lot of people agreed because it just bombed. Well, <laughs> now Marvel has to make an all female movie. You know why? Why is that? The power of Patty compels you. Whap. <laughs> now Tom Holland. Uh, in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, dubbed Mark Ruffalo the worst Avengers secret keeper. And there's a reason for that. Now, this is, <laughs> keep in mind, this is before the recent Marvel gaffe in which a massive spoiler was released regarding Thor Ragnarok. According to The Hollywood Reporter, during the Los Angeles world premiere held on Tuesday night at the El Capitan Theater, Mark Ruffalo, who stars in the film as the Hulk, came on to stage after being introduced by fellow cast member Jeff Goldblum. After receiving much applause, Ruffalo held up his phone to the audience to capture the moment using Instagram Live. This is actually a big no-no. Nope, they make you put your phone in plastic bags, and you don't get the phone back until after the film. But Ruffalo got to keep his, and I think Marvel is going to uh, not be happy with him, because he left Instagram Live running. He put the phone back in his pocket, completely unaware the app was still running, and he live-streamed about 10 minutes of the movie. Oops. Now, all you could hear was the audio. You couldn't hear the video, but he put it in his pocket and left the the app running. Now, after about 10 minutes, the app shut off. Well, and also live-stream on Instagram doesn't keep it, doesn't keep an archive. That's true. So, but we don't know if he found out and turned it off or if the app just shut off. We we don't know what happened there. Now, uh, boy. So, at the... (laughs) (laughs) It gets worse. Mark Ruffalo is now officially cursed because he appeared doing an interview on Australian television on a show called The Project with Chris Hemsworth. And the I'm not going to say what the spoiler is. Don't worry about that. But they let loose a massive spoiler. The host was talking to Chris Hemsworth about this spoiler he let slip. And Hemsworth just slams his hand on the table and says, man, you can't, you can't do that. You can't, you can't talk about that. You just can't. And Ruffalo is there like, ixnay. No, ixnay. Oh, my God. So if bad things come in threes, okay, the movie was, the premiere was one, this interview is two, wherever Mark Ruffalo goes next, something's going to happen. Well, we just, we just had a fourth bad thing happen. What was that? You trying to speak in an accent. <laughs> hey, oi, shut it. That was yeah. terrible, Dave. Oh. Hey, you shut it down. Oh, no, that God. was terrible. <laughs> I mean, that was... T- t- stop. All right, b- before we go to break here for a little bit, is there's a possibility that a Marvel convention could be in the works. It's entirely possible. Now, at the Thor Ragnarok premiere, where Mark Ruffalo live-streamed about 10 minutes of it, Fandango asked Kevin uh, Feige, 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 thank you, about the possibility of an all-Marvel convention. Star Wars has Star Wars Celebration. Disney has D23. Uh, San Diego Comic-Con and New York Comic-Con are massive, but that makes Marvel just one voice among a massive chorus of news coming out. So by the time Avengers 4 comes out in 2019, there will be 22 Marvel films, which is almost double what Star Trek has, and they have a convention in Vegas, and three times what Star Wars has, and they have a celebration in Orlando. So why not? Kevin thought that it'd be a good idea, and they'll look into it. I don't know how serious that he is. But how cool would it be to have a Marvel, just a Marvel convention? That would be something else. I would would love, yeah, hey, here we go. Bring it to San Antonio. We got a pretty good convention center. We got the Dome. You, can, you know, have it in my backyard. You know, well, yeah, right? absolutely. We can have a you know a little barbecue. I I had a party at my place. We can we can, you know, hold you know, Robert Downey Jr. and Scarlett Johansson can come over and we yeah. can have it at my place. Yeah, you know, just have you know the autograph session right there in the kitchen. You know, yes, people can pay for my auto. Oh, for their autograph. I, I wouldn't pay uh, for your autograph, Dave. Yeah, I, I know. In fact, I if you want to pay me money for your autograph, that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'd pay you money for my autograph? Exactly. But, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure who, uh, someone who you would really want an autograph from, and that would be the one who played Jen Erso. From 
And we'll that's all we're going to hear from Minion tonight. Thank you very much for. You know, you waited out. five hours just to get her autograph. I oh, would not. Yes, you, you would. Me. Now I'm just saying, if we did hold it in my place, uh, if Scarlett Johansson did need to stay over because you know drinking and, and driving and whatnot, mm. she if she needed to imbibe, I'm just saying I got a couch. I'd be more than happy to let her and me share it. It'd be fantastic. No problem there. So, uh, just saying, a Marvel convention, a Marvel Comic Con would be fantastic. Can you imagine the lineup that they would have for the inaugural Marvel Comic Con? What would they even call it? We have what, what do they call the Star Trek one? Is it just the Star Trek Experience? Star Trek Vegas. Star Trek Vegas. You have the Star Wars Celebration. Uh, you have, um, I mean, wh- what would you even call Marvel Comic Con? Marvel Con. Just Marvel oh, Con? Excelsior. Con. Say what? Excelsior. Excelsior. Oh, I like that. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah, we'll just let Stan Lee name it. Whatever he wants to name it, that you know, that Why work. not? <laughs> All right, so after we come back from the bottom of the hour news break, I'm going to go on a pretty good rant about CBS and Star Trek and how they're messing that up. And I'm not talking Discovery. And then we're going to give you the top 11 titles that we've come up with for the Han Solo standalone movie that are a lot better than just Solo. We'll be right here, right back here after the bottom of the hour news break on 9.30 a.m. The Answer and 9.30 a.m. The Answer.com. All righty, welcome back from the bottom of the hour news break. This is Get Your Geek On on 9.30 a.m. The Answer Talk Radio, powered by Southtown Games on Pleasanton Road near Loop 410 on the south side of San Antonio, where your gaming family wants to welcome you. If you missed the first half of the show, no problem at all. I am Dave Grimillion. I am joined by Minion and Goose here. And in the first half of the show, we welcome Nate Skinner from Southtown Games to talk Warhammer 40K, X-Wing, Armada, just a host of games that you can find, what to do if you're super intimidated by certain games, and just really had a good time talking about games. It was it was actually kind of refreshing to just sit down and talk games for a while. I love it when Nate comes by. It's it's He's a great interview. I like what somebody said. They call him Stargate Nate. Stargate Nate. I'm going to ask like him that. about that. Yeah, next time we're going to ask him about that for sure. We also talked about the Black Panther trailer, the possibility of an all-female Marvel movie, and how Mark Ruffalo is absolutely cursed. Uh, don't make him angry. You wouldn't like him when, you're, when he's angry. Well, he, he's going to make himself angry. If, he's always angry. Yeah, that, that's a secret. <laughs> uh, we also talked about the possibility of, a, of Marvel Con. Uh, D23 does all Disney. Star Wars Celebration does all Star Wars. It's time for a Marvel Con. It really is. Yeah, but then the engine's going to quit on it. But a bump, bump, bump. Bum, bum. A little Star Trek 3 joke. Hey, oh. All righty. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into uh, the next part of our show here, which is something that we haven't done in a little while. I need to go on a bit of a rant for a bit. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. Jeez, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. Okay. So, it's not often I go on a rant. Uh, sure, I have my opinions and certainly give you know negative reviews every once in a while, but I haven't gone on a real solid rant in a while. And Well, here we go. CBS is screwing up Star Trek. All right, so I'm done. Moving on. Right. No, 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 I'm kidding. This is, and I don't, I'm not talking about Discovery. I'm talking about the way they're honoring the franchise. Last year was the 50th anniversary of Star Trek, the original series. This year was the 30th anniversary of The Next Generation and the 25th anniversary of Deep Space Nine. And what do we get? Well, we got Marina Sirtis on the air. Well, that's true. But did we get a special Blu-ray set with all new interviews with everybody? Did we get a box set with a little little miniature Enterprise figure or something? Did we get a new release of action figures and toys and and something? Did we get get a a commercial during Discovery hyping the Blu-ray set of Star Trek The Next Generation? (laughs) Did we get this uh, 50th anniversary special? We didn't get a special. We didn't get a documentary, a behind-the-scenes a talk with uh, the family members of Roddenberry or the, um, I forget, Leonard Nimoy's son, Adam, who, who, Adam. Adam, who just did the, um, who just did his documentary. We didn't get anything. Well, and this is just one of those weird things where, what was it, right after, like in 2008, I think, Paramount split. So you had Paramount, which makes the Star Trek movies. And how all rights to all the movie stuff. Then you had CBS who had all the TV stuff. So they can't, I don't know why, but there's some, there seems to be something where they can't get, you know, basically their hailing frequencies aren't open where they can't communicate to each other to get something done right. But here's the thing. This is what really grinds my gears. Okay. 
you'll never have another 50th anniversary. You'll never have another 25th anniversary. You'll never have another 30th anniversary. These are milestones that CBS let slip through their fingers. When Doctor Who hit 50 years, it, that series, that set of episodes they did for the 50th anniversary was a treasure. That was the best writers, the best cameos, the best acting, the best story. It was incredible. When Star Wars did their 40th anniversary earlier just this year, oh my God, it was everywhere. It was everywhere. Oh, yeah, Disney, 4th, and, yeah. yeah, Disney and Lucasfilm went crazy in, in May of this year. Even la- even a few years ago when they did the, the 30th anniversary, they had the, they had the Celebration 4 so in L.A. Did yeah. Star Trek, did they, you know, did they even do a spoof musical on Saturday Night Live? No. No. The only no, thing that really did that well was the con. There, there wasn't, it wasn't a 60 Minutes interview. There wasn't a tribute on Time Magazine. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It was disgusting. It was deplorable. It was despicable. The best thing they could have done, and this is, this is a no-brainer, is to get a montage of interviews with the Next Generation cast, the original series cast, with somebody about their excitement for Discovery. Talk about the past and hype the future. That's a no-brainer. Hello? Why can't you sit... Nichelle Nichols down and say how excited she is for Sinequa Martin Green. Why can't you get a Jerry Ryan or Kate Mulgrew, Avery Brooks, Bill Shatner? Why can't you get Patrick Stewart? Hello, Jonathan Frakes, Brent Spiner. Why can't you get them to sit in a chair, interview them, get them to talk about the past and hype the future? It's literally a no brainer. Because nobody's <laughs> has no brains at in that department. Thank you. Absolutely none. It, it was, it's disgusting how they let this slip by. It really is. Now, Star Trek has never been, you know, the king of pop culture. That's Star Wars. Okay. There haven't been as many action figures and phaser rifles and, and batlets for kitties running around as there were with Star Wars. I'm not disputing that, but there was no re-release. There was no hype. There was no build up. There wasn't even a sale on Amazon. I will say that, was it last year or the year before that they re-released uh, the Blu-ray of uh, the Blu-rays of Next Gen of the original series and Enterprise as separate, complete series sets? Hooray! That was cool, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was neat. But and of course, the cons, the Star, the Star Trek Vegas did a lot. True, but with CBS and Paramount behind this, it should have been more. This is the 50th anniversary, the 30th anniversary, 25th anniversary. They should have had a parade of celebrities. It should be all Star Trek all the time, especially in September. And they just let it slip. Absolutely let it slip. And it, it upsets me. It really does. It really does. I, I just can't believe that they'd be so short-sighted. This is something you plan two years in advance. This is something you start calling agents on the year or, or you know, like 10 months before and say, hey, save the date. We're bringing everyone to New York. We're going to sit them down in a studio and we're going to do interviews and hype up Discovery. But no, CBS can't see past the end of their nose. And it drives me crazy that a franchise this beloved that impacted generations of people and technology advances like you wouldn't believe in technology because of Star Trek. And the milestones just go by. Yeah, whatever. We'll make the 51st anniversary unique. Mm. Yeah, give me but a, it's 50. Come give on. me a break. No, I mean, no. it's just, it, it, it really, I'm sorry. I don't, well, no, I'm not sorry. Because I said I was going to go on a rant, and, and here I go. Because CBS and Paramount, you dropped the ball. You absolutely dropped the ball. And you can't pick it up again. That's the thing. You can't go back and say, oh, man, yeah. Oh, you know what? I, I, I listen to Dave's show, and he's right we got to do something now. It's the middle of October. The time has passed. You guys screwed up. You guys absolutely screwed up, and it's, it's to y'all's detriment. You know, y'all could have made some more money off of this. Where's my 4K, huh? Where, where are my new line of action figures? Where are my phasers? Yeah, cause the, Where's something? Where are yeah. my communicators? Where's something, CBS? Yeah. Because even you know, in terms of the action figure, yeah, we, we really need some stuff. There. Absolutely. To be fair, your communicator is what you use every day. It's your well, cell phone. Yes. And, and what's, the, what's their way to pay homage to this? Just let it go. Just, well, whatever. It's disgusting. It's despicable. I, I just, I'm, I'm fed up with it. I'm tired of it. 
It's just, uh, if anybody else, can you imagine if Disney had the, the rights to Star Trek, what they would have done? Oh, yeah. For the um, anniversary specials? 50% less lens flares on the new movies. <laughs> well, yeah, that too. <laughs> I mean, you would have seen, you know, mouse ears on, on the Enterprise. You would have seen, they would have done so much with this franchise and instead they just let it go. Absolutely let it go. <sighs> Breathe, okay. Dave, breathe. <laughs> we're good. All right. So All right. With, with that being said, let's move on. And we want to talk a little Star Wars news here, shall we? I'm looking forward to completing your training. In time, you will call me Master. All right, and this is brought to you by our friends over at Laser Legend. Laser Legend on the north side of San Antonio off a of Lookout Road near I-35, home to a 4,000-square-foot video arcade, two-floor laser tag arena, and an indoor miniature golf course with black light. I love going to Laser Legend. I, I try to swing out there when I can, play their pinball, eat their food, check out their party rooms. It's a good time at Laser Legend. All right, I'm going to call my shot right now. We've seen The Last Jedi trailer. We've seen now the unveiling of the official Han Solo movie title. And I'm going to call my shot right now on, in, in October, two months before we get the movie. The Last Jedi will not beat The Force Awakens at the box office. I, I have to agree with you on that one because when, when uh, Force Awakens came out, it was the first time in 20 years that we had. Ten. Well, no, the first time in years we had a you know a, a, you know the return of the original cast. Ah, oh, that's what very, I meant. Very to say. Good. It was like you know because like my, it's it's on it's it's Chewy and the Falcon and everybody was like it's the first time we've had you know the return. That's of right. Everything. I, so I, everybody went nuts on it. I love watching those reactions to oh, the, God, the Force yeah. Awakens trailer. People were were screaming and clapping People and jumping up and down. People were moved to tears when they saw Han and Chewie. Daisy Ridley was moved to tears when she yeah, saw the trailer. Yeah. So where are the, where are the videos? Of of them flipping out about the last Jedi trailer. Well, there, it's there, but it's just kind of like okay, we, we're, it's we've already we know what to expect now. But even da- Daisy Ridley, there there are no there are no videos showing her reaction or so, John Boyega's reaction. So I have a question: mm-hmm. was was the box office as big for Attack of the Clones as it was for the Phantom Menace? I would have to go back and re- do our research on that. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going right go. now because <laughs> Attack of the Clones was such a f- much better movie. What, mm. what, wait, what did you just say? Attack on the Clones was better than the Phantom Menace. It was better? not. I mean, Phantom Menace was horrible. The, well, <laughs> Attack well, of the Clones Attack was, was worse. <laughs> no, it was not. It yeah. actually had substance. It actually moved the story forward. Are you insane? By sand, yeah. No, I, I'm serious. Are, did you hit your head on the mic or something? No. That was the worst Star Wars movie. No, Phantom Menace, you can oh take it completely out of continuity and nothing changes. All right, the Phantom Menace, uh, Lifetime Gross, I, I assume this is unadjusted. I went to boxofficemojo.com, and let me see here. Uh, Phantom Menace, $474.5 million worldwide. Attack of the Clones, $310 million worldwide. Revenge of the Sith, three hundred and eighty. Yeah, so it got some bounce because people liked Attack of the Clones. But Attack of the Clones got a hit because Phantom Menace was horrible. Mm. Uh, this is domestic. This is this does not include the foreign box office. Uh, for, and for those of y'all keeping score at home, nine hundred and thirty-six million for The Force Awakens. Now, true, we've had a gap. We've had a ten-year gap. All we had were Clone Wars. And Clone well, we Wars. had two Clone Wars series. Yeah, and that was basically in a Clone it. Wars movie. And a clone in a Clone Wars movie, and that was it. So the hype for The Force Awakens was massive. Mm-hmm. It was it was just beyond massive. I don't think the hype is going to be there that big for The Last Jedi, and I don't think it's going to beat Force Awakens at the box office. No, it's not. The, typically, the the sequels, especially like this, they don't do as well. Now, they did do a pretty good job of leaving so many questions, kind of like Prometheus, that you want to get them answered. But I don't think it's going to be that big. It, um, the Force Awakens worldwide hit just over $2 billion at the box office. I don't think Last Jedi will come close. I'm going to call like one and a half. 1.6 maybe. I don't see it getting more than 1.75 and that's if the, you know just everybody adores it. I don't I don't see it coming close to 2 million 2 billion dollars. If, if it does it's then the story better be very 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 good. Yeah, you, you better get like a like a Vader like reveal and it's going to shock everyone. Well, and not only that, but I mean but the characters have to be good, the writing has to be good, everything has to be really really good. It might get 
a good bump there because I think everybody may want to go see Carrie Fisher's last role. That could be the saving grace. So That's possible, but I just don't see it pulling down $2 billion. Now, the Han Solo standalone movie got its title. The long-awaited title, the second standalone movie, the first one being Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Right. And that was, okay, that was interesting. You know, what does Rogue One mean? What are they talking about? Is Jan Erso Rogue One? Is it just a call sign? What's going on? This one is just called Solo, a Star Wars story. <laughs> All right. I, I'm going to say, say my little piece on this, being the, uh, the Star Wars guy here. I'll, I go back to something what Mark Hamill said. Way back when, when they released the title for Phantom Menace, and everybody's like, what the heck is that? He said, um, George could call this thing a dog eating out of a bowl, and we'd go out and see it. Well, that's and true. And true, because we're going to go out and see it. That's true. Mm-hmm. But you know what the funny thing is, though, is that they kept the title a secret. Mm-hmm. Deliberately. It was the untitled Han Solo movie, and now the title is just Solo. Han Solo. So... Well, we know Chewie's not going to be in it. Not, you know, it actually is, from what we understand. No, because then they'd have to call it duet. But I'm bumped. Hey, oh, all right. So, 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 <laughs> so we sat down and we came up with the eleven titles that it could have been. Now, why did we go eleven? Because well, we're going to do it in less than twelve parsecs. But I'm bumped. So it's going to be eleven. All right. So the top eleven movie titles that the solo movie should have been. All right, here we go. Number eleven, Smuggler's Bounty. The quicker picker upper. <laughs> oh boy! Smuggler's Bounty does actually sound kind of good, but you'd have to have it sponsored by Bounty. I mean, there's just there's no way around that one. Number ten, Solo: The Red Cup Anthology. No, no. I mean, come uh, on, that one writes itself. That one's easy. It did write itself, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine. Jabba's got back. I like big huts and I cannot lie. <laughs> Your other smugglers can't deny. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, when Han met Chewie. Oh. That's a little take on when Harry met Sally. That's yeah. Really? Because okay. the so, joke you know. is funnier when you have to explain it. Right. Well, hey, keep, <laughs> keep in mind, okay? Hmm. Uh, So when Han met Chewie, that's number eight. Number seven, the number seven movie title that the solo movie could have been, Sleepless in Corellia. What is with you and Meg Ryan today? I don't know. (laughs) But uh, if we're going to, because there's got to be some type of a love interest in there somewhere. So Well, I mean, especially back then, if you're going to do a love interest, might as well be Meg Ryan. It's not a bad idea. Meg mm-hmm. Ryan in a Star Wars movie. Hey, why not? We hey, got Laura Dern in it. Meg so. Ryan was, was really cute back in the day. You see her in You've Got Mail? Mm-hmm. She's, she's got that, that short, spiky haircut. Which could have just been called Sleepless 2. Or yeah, or pretty, you, pretty <laughs> much. I mean, let's be honest <laughs> here. If we're going to go with that, you know, we could have called it You've Got Mall. You've Got Mall. <laughs> oh, oh, Lord. Oh, that would have been the, the Clone Wars movie name. Oh, yeah, right. that's the Darth Mall standalone movie. So before we get to our, to our top It comes in two here. parts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm going to throw something at you tonight before it's all said and done. <laughs> but later on, it just becomes one big movie again. <laughs> <laughs> number six. The number six movie title, the solo movie could have been The Han Dynasty. No? No. Nah, no? Nah. no? I don't, don't like that one? Okay. All right. Before we get to our top five, what, what are y'all's expectations for the box office for the a Han Solo standalone movie? It might work. I, I, I'm, I'm I, I got to wait for the trailer. Yeah. Gonna wait for the first trailer. I, I think much like uh, Discovery, we said the Discovery, the pilot had to really be a home run to get people interested. I think the trailer for a Han Solo standalone better be something special. I will say that first episode of Discovery got a lot of people interested. It surely did, which is what it would thank God it did at that because before that everyone and was we may trashing. have to we may have to do a little live special about Discovery before too long. That's true. That's true. We'll we'll discuss that though in a little bit. Yeah. Um, so what what do y'all what do y'all think will they cross? Let's see the Rogue One movie. I think hit like six or seven hundred billion million. Sorry, rather. Uh, let me see here. Rogue One, Rogue One, Rogue One. Star oh. Wars story hit five hundred and thirty two million dollars domestic, five twenty three foreign. It hit one billion dollars. Will the Han Solo movie hit one billion dollars? Yes or no? Uh, no? I don't think so. So <laughs> if we ever did, if Darth Maul had kids and um, oh, we did God. a movie about them, really, we're going back to this. Mole rats. Oh. oh no! That's what. And thank th- you, Stephen Sargent. Thank for you. That. <laughs> Throw something at you for that one. Gracious. Moving on, to number five. Oh goodness. <laughs> oh, no, seriously though. So I'm I'm sorry. One billion dollars? Yes or no for the Han no. Solo movie? No. Nah. Both no. saying no. no, no. Would it come close? Nah. Nah. 
I think it could. Hold on, define your definition of close. Uh, over eight hundred million dollars. Maybe, possibly. I think the highest it could go be about eight hundred million. Yeah. Never tell me the odds. Hey, oh, there we go. Anyway, number five, the number five Han Solo movie title that it could have been besides just Solo, Han of the Dead. No. It's, it's mm, nah. Oh come on! Mm, oh. Who doesn't like Shaun of the Dead? I've never seen it. Actually. You've never seen Shaun of the Dead? Okay, movie night coming wow, up. Wow, yeah, serious movie night. Okay, number four, the number four Han Solo movie title. There's just something about Chewy. <laughs> I hear crickets. Oh come on! Now that's funny. Because if I actually did crickets, he would throw something at me. Oh come on! That is funny. There's just something about Chewy. Crick, crick, crick. Oh, goodness. All right, here we go. Number three, the number three Han Solo movie title that it could have been Dirty Rotten Nerf Herders. Actually, that one's pretty funny. That's I, not too that's bad. That's because you suggested it, moron. I caught you there. <laughs> yeah, I originally went with Dirty Rotten Scoundrels because it was but the they're, th- Steve Martin movie. That's trademarked already. Yeah, I'm sure Disney can afford it. It's okay. Uh, Dirty Rotten Nerf Herders. That's pretty good. Number two. One Rogue. Yes. One Rogue. Yes. I actually, I got to give props to John Mac McCormick in the UK. That's the first time I saw that was, he, he said it in the chat one day. One Rogue. Uh, it's, I like that one. That one is actually I like doable. It. I just hope he'd be a lot better than Rogue One. <clears throat> I'm waiting for the sequel. <laughs> It's called, uh, a, it's called The New Hope. I, 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 oh, yeah, that's right. I hear they're going to get a director for it. Uh, George, George something? I don't know. Yeah, he's George, get out of George Locust? George Locust, uh, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah so, okay. You know, the guy who did American Graffiti? They're going to let him do how that. How about one. the one who did... T- how, why don't they get the guy who did THX? That's it's the same guy. Oh, is it now? Yeah, yeah he's good. Okay. He's yeah. hey, some up-and-comer. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It might work. I know yeah. they did an episode of Legends of Tomorrow last season that had him in it. So. Uh, yeah, that was good. Yeah. And the number one Han Solo movie title that it could have been other than just Solo. You ready? Here we go. It is Han. Just just Han. <laughs> I like my suggestion at one point, <laughs> which was I know. I know. Just I know. Yeah, it's yeah. Because they have a prequel called I Love You. That could that could have worked. Imagine the box set possibilities. But I also like my other one, which would have, could have been Harrison's not in this one. <laughs> really? Yeah, why not? Just go with that one? No, because he's not in it. So. You, That's you, true. He's not in you it. You know, if J.J. Abrams were doing this, then he would show up in some type of alternate timeline dimension, and he would meet his his younger self. and Via a lens flare. <laughs> lens flares. No, he, he. what happened was we'd see an alternate ending to The Force Awakens where he was the one on the planet with Luke. And then they said, D- let me tell you how I actually got the Falcon. <laughs> hey, that would actually work. So the things I want to see in the Han Solo, well, I guess we can call it a prequel. It's a standalone, but it's a young Han Solo. I want to see his time. I want to see if they do the Imperial Academy story. That because work. the original storyline was Han Solo was originally in the Imperial Academy as a pilot. Yes. And he saw the horrible things that the Empire was doing, became disillusioned and quit. Went to go do his own thing. Right. Uh, supposedly rescuing Chewbacca somewhere along the way because he was enslaved and being abused. At the, at the I, time. Have the, I have the old Wookiee storybook where they kind of talk about that. I hope they go that route. I really do. I also would like to see the game of Sabacc where he does win the Falcon away from Lando. I'm... I'm- I'm sorry, go ahead. I would, no, I'm just, I'm just saying that, that would be, I think, the scene that all Star Wars fans would want to see. And he's got to be wearing the vest. He's got to be wearing the vest. I mean, that, no question. He's got to do it. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of wondering because how much they're going to borrow from the Anne Crispin novels that came out in the late 90s, uh, which was a great series. A lot of people just overlooked it. But it, it was entirely underrated because it really got into a lot more of Han's backstory. And mm-hmm. it's like, oh, so that's how he got the scar and... That's how this happened and so forth. And how we met Chewie and... Well, and, and you being yeah. the head of the Star Wars Society of San Antonio, you would know all this. I of mean, course. And yeah. plus, you know, being a Han uh, cosplayer and fan for years. Yeah. I mean, it's... there. If, you ever get, if, you, if you're out there at, at any Barnes & Noble, look up the Anne Crispin novels as a, a trilogy set. Great, great stuff. What would be the one thing that would just kill it? That one thing that you That's, would see in a Han Solo movie that would just be awful. Um, if it were a comedy, you know, like, or like what they were going for originally. Yeah. Yeah. 
Let me see. Goose, um, what about you? I don't know. I mean, if they tried to make it ha-ha jokey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, like the buddy cop thing. Well, you could be that. You could still have a buddy cop thing and, and it be kind of funny-ish without being over the top, like, ter- let's say, Turner and Hooch or something like that. Right. But when you're but when you're talking Star Wars, Star Wars has never been really known for its comedy. There are two things that w- that would kill one of them, the Han Solo movie, and I've talked about this before. That would kill the Last Jedi for me. If I see Snoke pull out a lightsaber, I may walk out of the theater. I may I would be so disgusted and so disappointed if he ends up pulling out a lightsaber. I, I really if they would, would not be Snoke happy. To be a couple of people, I'm not going to say it right now. Well, but. it's they're just theories. We, we so don't have they, any confirmation. If they actually have Snoke be Anakin Skywalker, I'm no. done. I'm done. I'm done. No, you nope. dropped the ball on that one. Or Palpatine. Or yeah, a clone of Palpatine, yeah, or I'm Palpatine out. somehow survived the Death Star, or what? No, yeah, uh-uh. I'm out. I'm done. Siri, I'm dead serious. If he pulls out a lightsaber, I'm walking out. I'm done. But here's the thing: if we see in the Han Solo standalone movie, if we see Darth Vader. That may kill it for me. Well, getting back to the Anne Crispin novels, Vader was there. They don't mention him by name, but well, I don't he's mind. There. Yeah, I don't mind a mention. Yeah, I don't mind. Hey, Vader's coming to inspect the troops or or something. A mention, mm-hmm. but if he's in there, if he talks to Han Solo, if he has a scene where you know he's watching Han Solo right. fly through some maneuvering so, thing, so I'm, this bit of dialogue you don't want. Stand at attention, Lord Vader will be here shortly to inspect you, cadets. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind that as if as long as he doesn't actually show up. So I mentioned would be good. Yeah, you know, Han Solo says, "Oh man, I got to get out of here." Well, from, from what we kind of saw from like one of uh, Ron Howard's tweets, they did he, they did show like a picture of like one of the Death Star troopers helmet. So the Empire is going to be there somehow. Well, that's true, and I'm fine with that. But I just I don't want Vader in the movie, and I don't want Snoke to have a lightsaber. Those two things are just absolute vetoes for what, me. What about Porgs? Porgs galore. No, only, no if, porks o- in the only if they come with Taco Donna. There you go. All right, anyway. so that will go ahead and wrap it up here. If you want to tweet at us, you can find us at gygo underscore official. You can shoot me an email at dave the host at getyourgeekon.org. For Goose, for Minion, and for myself, I do want to thank all of our sponsors. That's Southtown Games, Laser Legend, Pro Defense, Pest Control, and the Mailing Spot. I want to thank you also for listening because you helped make the show what it is today, and we're very proud to be bringing this to you. Be excellent to each other and make sure to get your geek on every single day. Good night, everybody.